Hello people, welcome to Love and Unity Tell Your Vision. My name is Minister D, and this is my brother and minister in Christ, uh, Victor Chidi Williams. You're welcome. Thank minister you very much. much. Thank you very much, Mr. D. The Lord bless you. Thank you for having me on your show. Amen. The Bible says that in all things we should put God first. So um, I'll ask our minister to give us a very short prayer as we all close our eyes. Amen. Father, we thank you for this moment uh, of truth. We thank you for this moment of the word of truth. According to the Bible, the Bible says it's only the truth that can set us free as we go into um, certain questions and try to bring out the truth. Uh, uh, in the form of the answer, we pray that the truth that will bring out will be pure truth from the Word of God and that whoever is hearing this will accept it as a word of truth and may it answer certain questions that they might have in their minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Very powerful. Amen. Thank you very much. I know and I believe you are a strong man of God. I mean, through prayer we can, you know, testify to it. By His grace. Um, I've actually introduced you though, but Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Pastor Victor Chidebe Williams, Nigerian by nationality, and I live in Frankfurt and I'm um, studying at the University of Frankfurt Medical School in Niederland. And um, I'm serving under the Victor Ministry of Frankfurt. So, the good thing is what I do. That's great, that's great. So, how long have you been living in Frankfurt? I've been living in Frankfurt here yeah, for about three, three years and for a couple of months. I had to wait. Oh, okay, that's yeah. great. So, uh, what were you doing before? Uh, I used to live in South Africa in Johannesburg in particular. I lived in the country for about five years. I was studying there as well at the University of Witt um, in Johannesburg. I did part of my medical studies there before I had to move down to Africa. That's great. So I guess you can speak the African, so you know, oh, whether it's Sulu or something like that. I understand uh, a little bit of Africans and yeah. I do understand a little bit of Zulu, but not. Can't really both of speak in that way, you know. Yeah, yeah. but at least, you know, you know more than I do. Yeah, I would understand when they speak. <laughs> yeah, that's great, that's great. So, um, I think you've heard about uh, Love and Unity and Mass. We are doing, uh, I'm shooting this program for you right now. Um, the truth, nothing but the truth. I would just like to ask what you think about the group Love and Unity, what they do, and um, what do you think about the project, the truth, nothing but the truth. Well, first of all, um, I believe the, the Love and Unity group is uh, a group that has um, the Spirit of God in them and I believe their visions and their project are spirit inspired and um, Brother Derek uh, has been commissioned to lead this group and I've looked into some of uh, their um, ideologies and some of the projects and the things they want to achieve for the Lord. Um, it, it, they are great and because it's focused on, on young people and on the youth of our generation and I think it's key because this is part of things that is missing in a lot of ministries today. We kind of leave out the young people and we forget that these are the people that will continue carrying the, the vision of the church in future. But if we don't take care of them now, if we don't secure them now, the devil will steal them away from us. So I believe this is where love and unity and many other youth groups that are trying to lift up the name of Jesus among the young people come in. So I am um, very much supportive of Love and Unity and in all of their projects. This being one of them where we have a forum to speak, uh, answer certain questions that young people, or maybe not only young people, but a lot of Christians might have. And we answer them from the Bible point of view and from the truth of the Bible, not basically or based on our own personal opinion, but we try to lean more on the truth of the Word of God towards it. That's great, that's yeah. great. That's, you know, that's a great opinion. Very blessed. Thank you. Like, um, we got some, you know, mails and letters from our um, viewers, I'll yes. say. Yeah. And they were inspired and wanted to know one or two things. And since you're here, I think um, I'll just molest them, molest you with those questions. Well, molest, I don't know about it. Molest, I don't know, but we'll try, we'll try. And, and answer the questions as much as God will give us the inspiration. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, um, I'll go to the first question, yeah. and i go straight to points. I'm sure. going you with okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the first question will be, um, one of our youth wrote like, will our today's pastors in our 
uncountable churches here, talking about Frankfurt, mm -hmm. still open up a church if God has not given them that little gift. I like that one. That little gift to help His work, mostly in the church they used to be. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, we're looking at uh, about two things here. We're looking at being gifted, and we're also looking at uh, opening a church. So we we'll start with being gifted. It's it's very important for Christians to understand that every child of God, every born again believer, has a, a level of godly gift in their life. Because this is about the kingdom of God. It's about building the kingdom of God and winning souls into the kingdom. So to every one of God, God to every one of us, God has gifted to be able to minister to one another and also to be able to minister to the world. Now, being found in a church where God expects you to use your gift to uh, promote the kingdom via the church is also a, a, a wonderful thing because according to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, the Bible talks about um, He gave uh, uh, different individuals uh, different talents and gifts to some He gave pastors some you get teachers, you know, and I believe the, the primary idea of God to give people this gift is not necessarily to open their own churches, but basically to build the kingdom of God. And this is where some of us are missing the mark because we assume that just because I'm able to heal one sick person or cast out one little demon from somebody, that's a sign that I should open a church. So you have a, a, a prolification of a lot of churches around because individuals misunderstand the gift in their life. This is not about a church, it's about the kingdom of God. And uh, being gifted is no sign that you should have your own church. Being gifted is a sign that God wants to use you to promote the kingdom of God. So my answer to that question would be uh, the gifting upon your life is not a sign that you should have a church but it's a sign that God wants to use you to promote the kingdom of God. And if God wants you to have a church, He'll make it clear to you. There'll be confirmation from all over, even within the, the, the church where you serve, even the leaders of, of the church where you serve, will have the confirmation that God is calling you into extending the kingdom of God by way of having a church. That's great, that's great. Because <clears throat> I guess you know that, um, you know, the body of Christ, cannot be separated actually mm -hmm. and since the church is the body of Christ and so you get people let's assume the hand goes out and start searching for food mm -hmm. where does he feed? Mm -hmm. you know that's what I've been thinking because like, it's not the truth nothing but the truth mm -hmm. we have numerous churches in Frankfurt so yeah. after I used to ask like are we going to say this is my life that is how I come to heaven or am I going to say I belong to Bethel or Pentecost that is why I come to that's why I think this question came up and I really uh, wanted to ask you if I could add a little bit to that in, in uh, Frost Corinthians chapter 12